Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum, Khabatino Hazrat. Thank you very much for tuning into PTV World. Today is 2nd of Ramadan, 1438 Hijri, which makes it 29th of May 2017. Hello, Maha, how are you? Hello, Shazad. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, Khabatino Hazrat for all the non Urdu speakers means ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. So, welcome to the show. It is, the set, like Shazad said, it's the second day and we are in the full swing of our earliest month and it is. It's an interesting month and it's yeah, very yeah, interesting yeah. to see people and you know see how people adopt it, how they practice it, what's the culture. It's fascinating. I, I think Muslims all around the globe, they, they see it as a beacon of light, as, as, as a ray of hope, as a month of blessings as well. And you know, what we need to do is we need to utilize the blessings of this month to the maximum capacity. I think that's what it is. And for that reason, we do have one amazing segment which is dedicated to month of Ramadan as well and for all those people who are out there so that we can mm. have a better understanding of Quran Majeed. Exactly and it's about not just about just this month, it's about learning these lessons and then utilizing them for the rest of the 11 months and every day of the year. So let's get started with our main top stories for this week, uh, for today and then we'll start our show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, getting started with the top stories. National Assembly and Senate will resume their sessions in Islamabad today. Both houses will discuss Finance Bill 2017-18. And secondly, Chief Minister Punjab Shabash Sharif has announced the Safe City Project for Rawalpindi and said that the project will also be launched in Multan, Sargodha, Gujranwala, Faisalabad and Bahawalpur as its funds have been earmarked. Wow, that's a great initiative. Moving yeah. on, Minister of State for Information, Maria Mauduk Zeb says, PMLN holds constitutional institutions of the country in high esteem. Great. And then uh, the World Bank has upgraded the ratings of Benazir Income Support Program as highly satisfactory. I felt that's a great ranking. Now moving on towards sports where Pakistan's to face Australia today in their second and final warm-up match of ICC Champions Trophy in Birmingham. Green shirts beat Bangladesh by two wickets in first warm-up match. Come on, Birmingham? <laughs> that's the accent, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's where it's taking place. But ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, for all our green teeth, uh, for all those people who were playing, and the last two men standing, they did a great job against Bangladesh as well because we already thought that we might have lost the match as mm. well. But you well, didn't. This is it for the top stories. Let's move on towards our public service message, which is going to be a very important one. Let's take a look. Okay, so our public service message, as we know, it's we've done this multiple times. There's another t uh, turn on it. So it's fasting and the water intake. Uh, we leave our taps open. We're wasting it. You know, we don't finish the bottles. But we need to value it. We need to be a bit more um, switched on with our util util utilization of the water. Because if you're washing the dishes, if you're doing this stuff, switch off the tap. Because really, the, we in this country and in the world, we are running out of water. Exactly. And to be more precise about the figures, I'll yeah. just give you a small example, which is from Rawal Pindi. And today, when I was going through the newspaper, that's where I read it. So. In Rawalpindi, over here in Pakistan, which is the city, we do have a utility of approximately 60 million gallons a day. And according to Vasa, it has actually gone down to 54 or 56 million gallons a day as well, which is going to decrease day by day. So please make sure whenever you are utilizing any natural resource, please do not waste it. In fact, anything, just don't waste it. Exactly. That's what our public service message is. And let's move on towards our show, ladies and gentlemen. And as we very correctly said, that we have got a new segment for all those people who are out there mm. to give you a better understanding of Holy Quran and all of those surahs which were bestowed upon Prophet peace be upon him. Yep, exactly. And as you know that last year we started the segment in the first half where we did discuss it. And it's not about just say reading what's there, reciting it, memorizing. It's actually about uh, breaking it down, understanding it, what does it mean in the 21st century for people who call themselves Muslim, how should we behave, and how do we adapt it to our lives and be the best human beings possible. Exactly, and that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are very glad that, you know, the guy who actually joined us last year as well, he's with us again. Mm. Thank you very much for spending time. He's none other than Mr. Yusuf Raza. Hello, Yusuf. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for having me again. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for being here. Yeah, last year was a real, um, you know, educational time for us, and especially in the social um, sphere, because mm -hmm. that's what we need to know socially, how we need to behave. And before mm -hmm. we move on to what, what we are here for, yeah. 
how was your entire year? Because you know, we, we, yeah, we have exactly. seen you off the genre last year, right? Yeah, it's been 11 months. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it, it is. It was good, alhamdulillah. Um, you actually haven't changed a single a bit. bit. You're <laughs> exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, you haven't even gained a kg. <laughs> no, like, it's almost <laughs> like may have lost a couple. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, great. Amazing. Okay, so what are we doing today? Uh, we're going to be talking about, we're going to start at the very beginning mm -hmm. where the Quran opens up. We'll be talking about Surah Fatiha. All right. So the very first surah of the Quran, um, to uh, get an idea of the importance of the surah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was talking to a Sahabi, uh, one of his companions, Ka'ab uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he asked him, should I tell you of a surah the likes of which is not in the Zabur, not in the Injil, not in the Torah, not even in the Quran itself? Okay. And the Sahabi's like, yes, please tell me. And he in turn asked him a question, what do you recite in your prayer? And he said, Surah Fatiha. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said, this is that surah, the likes of which is not in any other revealed scripture and not even in the Quran itself. It is, in other words, the greatest surah of the Quran. And he then refer referred to it as Sab'a min al Mathani wal Quran al Azim. These are two phrases used in the Quran itself when the Messenger وسلم, was being consoled by Allah yeah. that Allah has given you this great gift. When he was being persecuted and tortured, him and his community in, uh, in Mecca, Allah consoled him by reminding him of this gift of Surah Al Fatiha. That's how important and how great this particular surah is. And, and, and you know what, you know, it's been 30 years that we have been praying, I have been praying, in fact, for all those people relatively whatever your age is. And we might have never even thought of it that why in the first place do we even mm -hmm. recite Surah Fatiha uh, in, a, in our prayers. So, you know, let's get started with that. Yeah, so because, because we do it so repeatedly, we tend to take it for granted. And it is one of those surahs, mostly generally, if we know the translation for any surah of the Quran, usually we would know at least some of the translations of Surah Fatiha. So we, when we talk about learning the Quran, we try to jump Fatiha and go somewhere else yeah. and sort of skip that. What we don't realize is that is the messages in this surah are so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, through the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us to reiterate, remind ourselves, repeat this surah every unit of prayer. Prayer mm -hmm. is not accepted without Fatiha. Exactly. Not accepted without Fatiha. So getting right into it, uh, we'll go about it with respect to a hadith, which is a hadith Qudsi, which means that the Messenger وسلم, said that Allah said. Mm -hmm. Right? So the, the Messenger وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi nisfain. I have divided the prayer between myself and my abd. My loving, some loving slave, uh, loving who has given himself in willingly. Or Not a forceful slavery in any sense, but mm. someone who's given, in, given himself in lovingly. Mm. I have divided the prayer between him and me. Wow. It's division between him and me. Uh, for, my, for my abd is whatever he asks for. Whenever the abd says, whenever my slave says, and the, the word abd is important for us to recognize because the Messenger وسلم, in the parts of the Quran where he is honored the most, he's not called Rasul. Or he's not called Nabi, he's called Abdi, Abdi. my yeah. Abd. Yeah. So it's a place of honor, it's a position of elevation mm -hmm. for the human being. And so whenever the person says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, mm -hmm. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he responds, Hamidani Abdi, my Abd has done my Hamd. My Abd has done my Hamd. And just to get an idea. Every time you say it, every, every time, time you, you say it. At the end of every ayah, Allah responds. Wow. So this is a dialogue, this is a conversation going on. And just for, we have this in general experience wherever we work, right? Uh, wh whether it's school or university or workplace, everyone has heads of departments, bosses, you know, people who are in charge, the main, yeah. the, the main people in charge. And whenever we are merely mentioned by the people in charge, that gives us such a boost in our self-esteem mm. that we've been noticed, and that too in a positive light. So for us as people praying before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realizing that he is responding. And not only is he responding, he is using the word that he loves the most in terms of honoring the human being. The way that should boost our self-esteem if we but realize and think over it. You know, not just speed through Fatiha, but pause after ayah as if we are hearing the response. Yeah. And just, you know, let it, let it sink in and then move on. And then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on the next ayah. When the, when the slave says, uh, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Athna alayya abdi. My, my abd has piled praise upon praise upon praise for me. Wow. 
And then when he says, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majjadani Abdi, he has exalted, extolled me, mentioned my greatness. And then the next ayah, he says, Iya kana abudu wa iya kana stain. Allah says, this is between me and my abd. And for my abd is whatever he asks for. So this is divided. Wow. And the last part, Ihdina siratul mustaqim wa siratul ladhina an'amta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim. Whenever someone says this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is purely for my abd. And wow. for him is whatever he asks for. Amazing. So just taking it into the context, like mm. you started off by saying, living in the 21st century, mm. right? We are 21st century Muslims. How does the Quran relate to this? Mm. If you just look very, very briefly, very even simplistically at the history of the world, traditionally, traditional societies, whatever their religion may have been, it has always been that tradition has sought to elevate God mm -hmm. and mention the greatness of God and the, everything about God is great mm -hmm. yeah. and that's perfectly fine. But what they did for certain reasons was that had to be done by abasing human beings, by re re reducing human beings to being <coughs> pathetic, lowly, vile, evil exactly. creatures, and you know, just, uh, just like that. Yeah. And modernity, the post-enlightenment age, a uh, couple of centuries ago that started primarily from Europe, that sought to elevate man. And it sought to do that by reducing the level uh, that was given to religious deities or religious mm. uh, <coughs> symbols. And God was almost ignored, completely mm. sidelined, pushed into a corner, irrelevant, hereafter put down. Okay. Spiritual things put down. Put down. We have to put up these aspects now. And that was historically a reaction to what the tradition held. Mm. What we see in, in, in the world that we're living in is the postmodern world. It's, more, its attitude is more or less whatever. Mm. Like man's yeah. whatever, God, you know, we don't know, we can't be sure. Mm. We don't know if there's a meta narrative, it's there, if there is an overarching theory that can explain everything. Mm. So it's kind of uh, in the skeptical state. Or people just want to be confused. Yeah, Th and that's, that's, that's an it escape is. in itself. Exactly. That's an escape in itself. But when you put the Quran in that context, and the Quran says that elevate, when you recognize the greatness of God, God doesn't abase you. Mm. He elevates you as well. Okay, so now this is really important because this was something that we also highlighted last year, was the importance of actually understanding what mm -hmm. we're reading. Now, um, you know, like Shazad said, you, you know, you've been doing it for 30 years. You read it every day. You read it five times a day. But we don't, it doesn't sink in. Mm -hmm. But how do we now start instilling this, right. the lesson even from this surah, uh, how do we instill that in the kids? Right. So uh, when we look at the structure of the surah, mm -hmm. we look at the first three ayat, mm -hmm. and we see that that's talking about what we as human beings need to know about our Lord. Okay. About Allah. So it tells us exactly what we need to do. It, right. So it, it summarizes in three ayat the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. The fourth ayat tells, talks about iyaka mm -hmm. iyaka talks about our uh, relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. That relationship which makes this possible. Him being great and raising us as well. Mm. Yeah. Without abasing, without humiliating us. And then the last three ayats talk about the greatness of, of the human being. So whatever time we have left, let's take it ayah by ayah now. And uh, the first ayah, Alhamdulillahi <coughs> Rabbil Alameen. Mm. All, alhamd, alhamd is a word mm. that talks about the, the praise that we give to Allah, all mm. praise, but not just praise, also gratitude. Yes, mm. yeah. we're thanking. Yeah, so we're being grateful, because uh, you can praise something for being beautiful, or the flower is beautiful. Mm. I don't owe the flower anything, right? But when I'm saying incorporating the meaning of gratitude, mm. that places a responsibility upon yeah. me. Mm. That places a responsibility upon me. So I'm acknowledging that whatever I have has been granted to me, given to me by Allah, and I owe him for it. So whatever is in my capacity to reciprocate, to respond as he wants for me to do so. Mm -hmm. And uh, moving on from there, Rabbil Alameen. He is the Rabb of Al Alameen. Al Alameen re referring to all the people, all the nations, mm -hmm. all right? All the people who have been granted the capacity to think, mm -hmm. to understand. Allah is their Rabb. Whether that's human beings or jinnat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their Rabb. And what does Rabb mean? Rabb means the one who created you, who sustains you, who nurtures you, who nourishes you, who guides your creation, your growth 
towards a meaningful and purposeful end. Mm. Seventy times more of a mother. Seven and with love. Yeah. Mm. With love, he does that with his love, and as 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 a consequence, he has complete control over all of the processes that yeah. went about to bring the that as as an individual or as a species, Amen. as we were brought about, as we had evolved. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala controlled and channeled all of those processes, mm. and so that's who we are dealing with. That's who we are in, in conversation with. Exactly. And he's the one who will then respond, Hamidani I think that's the best, that's the best feeling. Mm. And I think for all those people who are out there, I think the majority of them might not even know about it, that mm. you know, even the God's responding. Yeah. So, and then we move on to the next ayah, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Mm -hmm. And as most of us know, both the words are coming from the word Rahim, mm. or the word for mercy. And so it's mercy being mentioned twice. In the same ayah with two different words. Ar where Ar-Rahman talks about the greatness, the, the intensity mm. of the mercy of God. Where one word is just not sufficient to talk about mm. how merciful he is. And Rahim talks about the perpetual nature, the continuity in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we read in the Quran the greatness of the mercy of Allah with respect to the revelation of the Quran on the Prophet sallallahu him rescuing Musa alayhi salam and, and the Bani Israel. It's persistence. It, and Ar-Rahim tells us that that same mercy is there for you and me to tap. Mm. Wow. Okay. That that's still there. That's Makes me happy. On. That's good. It, okay, it gives us hope. Now. Absolutely. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Maliki Maliki yawm yawm so the first ayah spoke about the greatness of Allah as we observe it in the world that we're living in. Mm. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim talks about his mercy doubled and you know in exponential form. Maliki Yawm din lest we become so complacent, oh God is merciful, I can do whatever the hell I want to. Mm. Oh God is merciful, I can get away with exploiting people, I can get away with manipulating people. Stealing, I can killing. I can get away with anything, God is merciful. God can't harm me, God can't punish me. God is more, more merciful than 70 mothers. Yeah. So I can just get away with anything. I don't have to pray or bother with any of those things. God is merciful. Mm. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim is immediately followed by Maliki Yawm din He is the master. He is the owner of the Yawm din of the day of judgment. Complete ownership. Limanil mulkul yawm. To whom does the dominion belong today? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask. Lillahi al-wahid al To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, the irresistible. Wow. So the universe is headed towards a meaningful end and that is towards going back to its creator and that will be manifest on the day of judgment where everything that we did is going to br be brought out in front of us. It's going to be brought out in front of us. So the greatness of Allah as on the day of judgment is highlighted in the third ayah. And so this is the one that I am interacting with. Mm. This is the one I am in dialogue with in Surah Fatiha. And then with the next ayah, the relationship. Mm. That my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particularly two capacities. That I am dedicating, pledging in a sense. Whenever I'm reciting Fatiha, I'm pledging that Ya Allah, as of now, I am in this state of ibadah. Exactly. That I am dedicating myself to you, to obey you, to mm. listen to what you have to say and tell me. And I do that with love. So ibadah is not just uh, forced slavery. Mm. Ibadah is willful, loving slavery. Where Ibn al-Qayyim, one of the scholars said, Rahimahullah, it includes ghayat al-hub, an extreme amount of love. Wow. And why would that not be? For the one who evolved me through all these dependent stages and lovingly nurtured me to who I am today. And you're doing it willingly as well. I have the free will not to, yeah. to do, not do so. So it is something that you enter into uh, with your free will and complete submission into mm. complete obedience. I don't pick and choose to what is of my convenience, but rather I pick and ch I, I do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me to do. Because picking and choosing, and we'll talk about that later, that's a very manipulative form of religion. That's how religion is misused and misrepresented. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about those in the, in the coming days. And to you alone I turn in desperate plea, in desperate supplication and dua. Mm. Wow. And with dua, I realize how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the doors to me that you know what, you can influence, Allah is saying this, you can influence my will, my decisions. Wow. That's what, that talk about elevation. Mm. So modern man can stand in front of the mirror and say, I am the best, I am the best, I am the best. Yeah. But he's only listening to himself saying it back, that doesn't count. Mm. I can stand in the mirror and say, I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful. That doesn't count for zilch. 
Mm. Well, even if you're doing that, please say handsome. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful. I think we did that we're last year as well. <laughs> we, we have no gender association. Yeah. We're completely free, yeah. so you can say that. It's fine. So, yeah. but if it's when the other validates that statement, mm. when that confirmation comes from outside, wow. and when the non-human divine does that, that's when it really counts. And so he does that and he opens the door for us. Ask and we ask, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Give us, guide us to the straight path. Which path? Sirat al Ladina An'amta alayhim. The path of the people that you favored. So now I look at myself and I have all these thoughts coming into my mind which tell me that I am lowly, I am pathetic, I am weak, I can't do this, I can't do that, and I have self esteem issues. But what Allah is telling me by giving me this dua, to make is you know what potential you have? The mm. path of an'amta alayhim, you can walk on that path. Wow. Who are those? You can walk on the path of Ibrahim, of Isa, of Musa, of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa All of these great people with all of the greatness that they lived with, you have that potential inside of you no matter what the world thinks you are. Exactly. No matter who you think you are. <laughs> Allah is telling you you have that potential inside of you. That, that potential where the Messenger وسلم, merely looks up at the sky. He doesn't even say what he, what's in his heart. He just looks up at the sky. It's a change of the Qibla. When that happened, uh, the believers were supposed to look at Bayt al-Maqdis, but the Messenger وسلم, wanted that they look at the Kaaba. We'll talk about that when the time comes as well. But Allah, Allah knew that Messenger wanted to look, face the Kaaba in the prayer. That, that's his desired Qibla. Yeah. Allah says, wow. We saw your face look up. Wow. So now it's the qibla that you are pleased with. Amazing. We're changing the qibla because of, a, Allah is saying, because of a human's desire that it should be changed. And we all know that the story of the mi'raj, how the first mm. the prayers were 50 and then they brought down to 25. Yeah. And then the messenger's requests resulted in the prayer coming down to what the, it's a negotiation between Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah. And it did come down. And it came down. Exactly. So the maqam of the human being, how can you consider this creation to be lowly? And if you do create, consider this creation to be lowly and pathetic, what does that say about the creator? How great can he be well, if well, all he's created are pathetic people? Mm, that's true. So Sirat al ladina and Amta alayhim. And then the surah ends mm. with an w alluding towards the inner evil of human beings as well. Another potential that we have. Mm. We tend to think that I am now guided, I am Muslim, I am my birthright, paradise. Mm. No questions asked. Straight ticket home, paradise. That's mm. what it is. I, those, that Jahannam is made for those Jews and those Christians and those Hindus. Mm. And even when we recite Fatiha, we think, oh, it's talking about those Jews and those Christians. What we don't realize is that what is being criticized is a particular attitude. Exactly. Mm. We're not being anti-Semitic. We're not being racist. What is being highlighted is a particular attitude that even Muslims have mm. adopted over the course of their history as well. They have fall we have fallen into that, that mm. trap. Mm. And so that is uh, what we need to be aware of and re realize that, that we have that potential to fall. Mm. Uh, if we are not aware of that, then we're just saying that these words are extra. In the greatest surah. And we should world. always be aware of w w what is going on and we should have a better understanding of what we are doing, in fact, in the first place before doing that as well. Mm. Thank you very much, Yusuf, Thank for you being so with much. us. Thank you so much. It is a great start. And to please it. do share with our viewers what are we going to do tomorrow as well. Mm. We'll be talking about Surat Baqarah. Most likely we'll be talking about ayah number 177, which mm. starts with Lays al birra and tuwallu wujuhakum. Great. Amazing. So, we'll, so we'll find out about that tomorrow. And Inshallah analyze and uh, dissect it so you can have a better understanding of what the Quran is actually teaching us. I feel great today. I think that's what I'm going to say. And for all those people, if you, if you have taken like a single word which is going to inspire you, I think we have done our job as well. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to get done with this uh, first segment of ours. And then we we'll need to move on towards our second segment, which has to do something with eyes, a retina, and the problems caused by this heat and dehydration. Let's go take a break.
my Lord, forgive and have mercy. And thou art the best of those who show mercy. Welcome back, everyone. And before the break, we had uh, we've started Ramadan, so obviously we have started our segment where we are going to be taking uh, different lessons, different things, and uh, translating the Quran for you and applying it in a social sphere. And how, as human beings, as individuals, we need to carry ourselves and to then continue these lessons and this positive way of behaving for the rest of the year. Exactly. And today we discuss Surah Fatiha. Tomorrow we will uh, be discussing another one. Oh uh, yeah, I th I think uh, we, we we really have to check it again and then we have, we have to double to move check. On with and we will share well. it on our Facebook. Yeah, we will as share well. it on our Facebook pages as well. But right now, moving on with this segment, where today, mm. as you know, before going towards the break, I mentioned that we'll be talking about our eyes. They're very precious. You know, th that's why we can see the world, and we should always be thankful to and Allah for such blessings. They also say that the eyes are the windows to the soul, so we need to look after them. And uh, so to discuss the and issue... beauty is always in the... Eye of the beholder. Everything yes. positive is linked to life. <laughs> but anyway, no, what we're going to be discussing are the different issues and illnesses that one can suffer with the eyes. What are the myths out there that we're going to bust? You know, the old wives' tales. And also how to kind of... Uh, when at what point do you go to a surgeon? At what point do you start your treatment, etc.? So to discuss all these things, we've been joined by Dr. Ali Afzal Bordla. He is a retinal surgeon and an ophthalmologist. Hello. Good morning. Well, thank you very much. Play Ramadan Mubarak. Thank Ramadan you very much Mubarak for joining Mubarak us. Ramadan Mubarak to you as well, actually. It's thank you so much it's for joining us. So let's get started. I think. I think I would love to get started okay, over here, and I would love to get started with most common diseases which are related to the retina or at the back of the eye as well, sure. because that's what you're specialized in. Yes. Yes. Well, things have changed actually. Actually, mm. because uh, if you look in the West, mm. the most commonest cause of blindness that mm. used to be cataracts, mm. or what we commonly call as Safad Motia here. Right. But now the common one of the commonest reasons now is age-related macular degeneration, which, okay. as the name implies, is an age-related disease of the retina. Okay. Why? Because the life expectancy mm. has changed right. over a period of probably last 50 years it or has so. extended it or has extended okay. yes it has mm. and uh, people mm. who used to live till their 60s or 50s mm. probably are now living in their 70s and 80s and the kind of disease process that we are seeing now mm. is slightly different than okay. what we used to have before okay uh, yeah okay no, so, so um because we're getting older so then what are we seeing what's happening well, there are many things happening, actually. Okay. Our, our bodies is going through a kind of degenerative process. Okay. And uh, the retina, obviously, mm. is a part of the body. Mm. So, as I said, mm. age-related macular degeneration is uh, one of the disease that happens because of that degenerative okay. change. Okay. And this is something that now we are commonly seeing in mm. our country as well. Okay, so now when you say age-related degenerative macular disease, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so what is that specifically? Well, what can macula, we expect? Yeah, well, retina is the back of the eye. Yep. And macula is the center of the retina. Okay. Which means for your fine vision, mm. for example, to read clearly, mm. you need macula. Okay. Uh, what happens in this particular disease is that your macula gets affected okay. right. it, it, it's not working anymore mm. and that slowly degenerates which means um, patients tend to lose their central vision okay. they can still see on the sides yeah. but if you would ask them to read a newspaper that might be so is it more of a concave or a convex thing or does it have to do something <laughs> with that as well? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think well so. You need, to, you need to imply, imply that on yourself actually. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, okay. I'm, not, I'm not applying this on, okay, on myself sure. but this is what happened to me yeah. where, because when I went mm. to an optician, mm. this is why he or she said that you know, oh, you've got a con 
K-Vision, oh, which no, is no, no, something no. Bell, wrong Bell, with that. Uh, Bell, Bell, uh, there are 101 reasons actually okay. to have to have a problematic vision because mm. because the question was about retina. So this is this is the reason I was I was saying that. Yeah, this is more specific to the this, retina. This is the most specific. And 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 the second thing that comes into account is diabetes. Okay. Diabetes has been a pandemic now in yeah. our country. Okay. And. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still not sure. I really doubt that when you are diagnosed with diabetes, mm. do we actually know mm. that it is going to affect our eyes as well? How mm. many of us know that? Mm. I don't think anybody knows that. Well, the international that standards are, mm. sorry to interrupt, international mm. standards are mm. that if you have been diagnosed with diabetes, you mm. should be going to your eye doctor once every year to have a detailed assessment of the back of the eye. Okay. So this is something which is considered as a must in the West okay. and developed countries. Right. And that is the reason that, do you know the kind of disease that we see here? Mm. It's not that treatment is not available. Okay. Mm. The problem is by the time patient is going to come to you, Absolutely. you won't be, be treatable. Mm. That is the whole issue of the of, that's, of, of that's our country. Okay. in Pakistan, yes. and I think I would love to reiterate that once again. That mm. you know, please make sure that you go to your general physician for a checkup after every six months or a year, which is very mandatory. I think that's mm. what you need to do. And I myself, in my life, have suffered just because of the fact that we didn't have any you, you know ritual of going to the doctor. Mm. Like so, you know, I only went to a doctor after like ten years, <laughs> and there was so much already wrong. Well, that was. Uh, but before mm. we move on towards diabetes, there's one more thing, mm. which which I want to ask, and that is because we were talking about the degeneration. Do you yes. think that there are different ways of slowing the process of degeneration down? Well, uh, that is the problem with so many of these diseases. Once you get them, mm. there is no way out. Oh. There, is, there, there, there is there is no definite treatment. Okay. Uh, there are multiple studies actually, mm. Uh, mm. but the thing is you can't escape age. Okay. You know, eventually the way we are going to get wrinkles, we mm. are going to get degenerations everywhere in the body. Okay. Uh, so there are things that you can't escape, but there are things that if you know, mm. for example, there is a subtype, there is a kind of macular degeneration mm. in your in which your vision drops very quickly. Okay. okay. So if your vision drops very quickly and you know that you had a history of age-related macular degeneration, mm. there is no point in keep on sitting at home. Mm. You should be going and seeing your doctor. Okay. Um, uh, so saying that, I think um, as, as a country, um, age-related macular degeneration is still not the biggest of our problems. Okay. Okay. We have got glaucoma, we have got cataract, mm. do you know the diabetes, mm. the kind of pathology that we come across here in the country is, mm. is, is, is one of the most severe forms that I have came across actually okay. in last couple of years of my experience in this country. Okay. But with all so of these laser uh, treatments available and all different types of surgeons and ophthalmologists being in town mm. as well, does it even help or it does not? Well, the thing is, I think we have got very good expertise in this country. We mm. have got very good expertise available in most of the cities of, of, of the country. Mm. The problem number one is, mm. like you have said, lasers, there are 10 different kinds of lasers which are used in eyes. Uh, which mm. we do not know which and, one to and, use. And it depends, do you know what kind of lasers we are talking about and what kind mm. of disease we are talking about? Because yeah. still there are so many diseases which are not curable. Okay. It's the prevention. Mm. It's, it's the pre prevention. Okay. Um, Sorry, continue? No, that's fine. It's, okay. it's just like diabetes, actually. Mm. Mm. For example, if we know that we have been diagnosed with diabetes, mm. then it is quite essential for us to make sure that we are having a good diabetic control mm. because it's not your blood sugar level. It's your mm. kidneys, your eyes, everything. everything yeah. Okay, so I think, yeah, so the awareness of actually the consequences of not looking after yourself. But because you are a retinal surgeon in ophthalmology, you've mentioned cataracts, you've mentioned diabetes, and glaucoma. Glaucoma. And um, retinal detachments. That's, that's that's retinal right. detachments. Yes. Now, at what point uh, do people start coming to you? At what point do we need to know? Because the thing is, we've gone past the prevention stage. If we were coming to you, that means that the person didn't do live their life in a way that prevented this from happening. So now they're sitting in your office. So what are the different um, stages now that they will go through if they're suffering from these things? Sitting in my office, actually, mm. when I look at the patients, mm. well, when I they are coming for the very first time, when yeah. they are coming for the what very is first the outcome? Time, Seventy to eighty percent of the time, I wish I haven't seen them, because majority of the Avoidable. time, they would they would had come at mm. a kind of stage when I would not have been able to give them the kind of results which I would have given them otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is that is the main problem. Okay. So what are um, the results? So they come to you at what stage, and what are normally the outcomes? Look, for example, let me give you give you example of diabetes because we need to be really particular actually if yeah. if, if we want to talk about something. Mm. 
if we talk about diabetes, yeah. what it causes in eye is something which is called as diabetic retinopathy. Okay. Now, diabetic retinopathy has got four stages. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it's very similar to the, the, the way um, different other diseases are staged. Mm -hmm. It has got four stages. And in your fourth or last stage, mm -hmm. patients would end up having bleeding inside their eye. Wow. Now, the problem is once you have got that, mm. you have already gone to fourth stage, it means you already have developed abnormal leaking or bleeding blood vessels at the back of the eye. Okay. You okay. can't undo an omelet, can you? No. <laughs> and this is, this, is, this, is, this is the kind of the problem. Yes, mm. you, we can treat it. Mm. And majority of the time, despite of the kind of expertise that people have developed in this country, they, mm. I think they are doing magic actually. Yeah. If you look at the kind of pathology that our surgeons deal here in mm. this country as, as, as compared to abroad, I, I, I think many times uh, we as a nation underestimate them. Absolutely. Right. I think they have, they have done a marvelous job, but still, mm. still there are so many people mm. that unfortunately we can't save. Okay, okay now, That's now a let's, shame. since we do have to talk about it like very precisely as well because mm. of the fact that you know we do have other things to cover yeah, yeah so, sure. so, so there's one more thing which i want to ask and that is that you know whenever we talk about diabetes obviously diabetes has an effect on each and every organ of your body right yes. and then w when you say that you know there are different levels of the disease itself that you know if it's on the fourth stage it's just literally gone out of the hand yeah and people are doing, diabetes yeah, and people are doing so. the magic as well now, for example, for somebody who's got diabetes, but his blood sugar level is in control, do you yeah. think it's going to affect the same way or it's not? It's not, okay. but we should not presume that it's go not going to do that. Okay. Yeah. That is the problem. That is the point. Okay. If you have got diabetes, how good you are in controlling your disease, you should be going to your eye doctor once every year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this that is should be a standard. That's just well, the that, this is an international standard. Mm. So. Okay. So, so why do people do it? Why do people go here? What are the reasons when they come to you? It's you know, how many people know that once they are, once they have got diagnosis of diabetes, they would be having a problem, problem mm. in their eye. How many people know? Okay, that? and what are the symptoms of the first three stages, which we didn't discuss as well? Well, this is this is the important bit actually, because mm. majority of the time, the first three stages won't have any symptoms. Oh. Majority of times. Majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, otherwise then. Well, that is the real issue. Mm. The first symptom in the form of bleeding at the back of the eye, when a patient is going to get, he would already be on fourth stage. Okay. And the only way to find it out or figure it out is obviously when you are actually looking at a patient. Yeah, and so that's why the importance of regularly going and getting eye checked. Yes, is it's, it's, it's just a prophylaxis so and does, prevention. And does the patient get to know that, you know, there's bleeding at the back of my eye? Well, Do they have any patient idea? Patient would be the first person to <laughs> know <laughs> if it. Really? If because if, if it's if at the back of the eye, I'm not got sure. Bleeding yeah. at the back so of the eye. So, why, okay, no, so for people who don't know, because... Uh, because you'll lose your vision, as simple as that. Oh, so you, you, know, you look, won't look, be able look, to see look, anything. Look, well, you would, but it depends how much bleed you have got. Look, I is like a tennis, not a tennis, probably That's a table tennis ball. Actually, if we can get a picture yeah. up of this, guys, and, producers. And, and, uh, even a drop of blood mm. floating around inside the eyeball yeah. is enough for you to cause havoc. Yeah, but when we get a hair in the front of our eye, it causes us so much pain and dis exactly. distress. Exactly, exactly. It's such a sensitive, it's, mm. it's such a sensitive And what about all of those move. people who suffer from blood pressure? Well, there are, there are, there, there are, very well-known diseases actually that mm. happens due to high blood pressure and mm. uh, one of uh, one of the very commonest thing mm. is the retinal vein occlusion okay. which means due to high blood pressure mm. you can have uh, stagnation or pooling of the blood flow at the back of the eye. Mm. Uh, again the, there are certain rules of thumb mm. for example if a part of body gets mm. deprived of oxygen mm -hmm. the rule of thumb is it dies yeah. Yeah. it finishes so if someone ends up having a severe central or a severe branch part of the retina retinal vein occlusion they are going to lose most of them they can lose their uh, functional vision i'm Gosh. talking about functional vision All right. that you use to drive to read oh and uh, hypertension or high blood pressure is a major cause mm -hmm. same is the case with high cholesterol mm -hmm. same is the case with m so many other diseases that can affect you for example thyroid mm -hmm. um, 
So I think it's it's just a matter of promoting more and more awareness in our society. Exactly. Okay. Two more things which I want to yeah, ask, sure. and that sure. is. I'm not allowed to ask questions today. Uh, yeah. I'm very sorry for that, <laughs> but, but I've seen this. I've yeah. witnessed this over here in Pakistan. So you know, we all know uh, whenever we go out for shopping or we're roaming around around F10 or F7 or F6, we do see a couple of people selling quite a lot of sunglasses, right? Which which do seem that you know they're not of good quality and they might not, not use the best bad. they might not use the best glass as well do mm. you think that these glasses can deteriorate your vision well you are you're really lucky actually that you're roaming around f9 and f10 because i'm i'm, I'm from Multan, so i, I, I don't know <laughs> <I'll say Okay>. <laughs> you, you, you are so so okay, so co coming back to your coming back to your question actually the thing is we have it's a dry land mm. yeah and we have got sun there all the times mm. And uh, we have got a significant amount of uh, UV exposure, ultraviolet yeah. light exposure. So I think it's it's worth wearing um, wearing a UV protected sun sun okay. sunglasses. Okay. UV protected. UV. No. Yeah. So th this is the thing. This is what we see on all the sunglasses. And then you know when you're buying the ones that are a bit more, uh, you know, they they make more impact on the wallet. Now, how important is it actually to take these preventative measures? Do these also uh, play a role in the later degenerative processes? There, that are, take place? Th there are so many myths, actually, because yeah. because Let's the, the yeah, yeah, because because the problem is, you know, when we are talking about science, yeah. you know, we need to have solid scientific evidence to mm -hmm. make a statement. Okay. And there are so many things that I won't be able to explain or justify mm. the way they are considered in the society. Okay. So tell us some of the main things that you hear and you're just like, where did you get this from? Well, for example, one thing that I hear pretty much every day yes. is that if you are wearing glasses, your number would stop. It won't increase anymore. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of concept that parents have got towards their kids. Okay. Yeah, that's what doctors used to say. Okay. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bad doctors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, doctors. Okay, okay, let me correct myself. Not even doctors, opticians. Okay. Well, well scientifically, it does not happen like that. Okay, okay, so can you tell us what happens? Well, what, what happens is, let's let's take example of myopia, which is a kind of refractive error, which yes. means you have to use glasses for distance. Yes. Now, the reason you are having that problem is because the size of your eyeball is mm. bigger mm. than what it should be. Okay. Now, this is something which has been genetically programmed in your body. Yeah. That means the size of the eyeball mm. is getting bigger disproportionately to okay. your body. Okay. Now, when you are growing up, mm -hmm. your body is getting bigger mm. and your eye is getting bigger as well. Okay. So the more larger, the more bigger an eye is, mm the more higher your number will be. Okay. So so this is this is not important. This mm. is not important for a kid. Do you know, people would come to me and they would say, Do you know, we had a refractive error of minus two mm. and now it has got to minus three, what kind of doctor you are. Yeah. 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 But 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 the thing is, <laughs> you know, the, the, the problem He's a smiling is smiling doctor. Yeah. Yeah, no, but this is, I can imagine yeah. you can only yeah. laugh. But the problem is it's 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 not my fault. Yeah. It's yeah. not my fault You're actually. Up. Yeah. That is not important. The important mm. is that your kid mm. should have the benefit of having a perfect vision as much as possible mm. while he is growing up. Exactly. Yeah. We can't do, we can't stop him from going from minus two to minus three. That is not important. It's just a change of number. Okay. He's still wearing glasses. Okay. The important thing is if he's going to his school, mm. he should be seeing clearly. This mm. is what, which is important. Exactly. Okay. So what's um, the, okay, tell us one. But it's a myth. It's a big myth actually. And <laughs> so I'm glad no, you told I, us. I just, I just get headaches. And it's hard a dozen, to dozen, a dozen <laughs> times every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now well, that's one myth. I'm really glad we cleared that one up. Um, but what is another myth that you would like to bust on the show, which really gets to you and you really think people should be aware about it? What's another thing that you Can you give me a hint, actually? Well, I, I'm not sure. I'm asking you because you're the... Uh, you're the well, um, well, there are many, actually. There are many. Okay. For example, um, for example, mm. let, let, let's take example of cataracts. Yes. The Sufad Motia. Yes, people mm. would wait till their vision is gone. Mm. Yeah, they, won't, they won't be going for an operation. Mm. Now, look the way things have changed. Mm. 20 years ago, we used to make a cut in the eyeball. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah, it, All it right. Ouch, it sounds painful. So yes, yes. Okay. So and 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 uh, the lens, the cataract used to come out. Okay. So you would have really wanted it really hard. Mm. Do you know so that you would you would open it up and everything is going to come out. Now it's opposite to that. We do not take the cataract out. Mm. We dissolve it inside the eye. Oh. Okay. Which means mm. if you have got significant problems with the vision. Mm. Um, the timely you get it done, mm. 
the better it would be. You would have a better visual recovery. It would be more quicker. Mm. Um, the amount of energy that we have to use in terms of using laser would yeah. be less. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's a totally other way around as compared to what it used to be. Okay. Amazing. And, and the last thing that you want to see in this age and era mm. is a person coming to you with a cataract, mm. waiting at home for last five years for his vision to completely wipe off yeah. before he goes and see once. It, before he goes before he goes and 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 examines his doctor that whether he can do it or not. Okay, that's really sad. But thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's, a it's pleasure a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. It I really pleasure. feel like we've learned something a lot today. Thank um, you very much. And well, for a couple of days, you can even stay here because it's going to be well, very that's hot. Very kind of, that, that's very kind of you, but I do <laughs> need to go back. <laughs> because so. the weather must be really hot in Multan. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it gosh. has always been like that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for yeah. being here. Thank but ladies and gentlemen, time now to move on towards our interesting facts. And today we have picked up on dates, which is also known as Khajure in Urdu. Okay, so they're very good because they heal the digestive tract. They provide bone strengthening minerals. Um, they are great blood builders. Natural energy booster. Uh, they're an allergy relief. Help prevent cancer. Um, they maintain a healthy weight. Nervous system support. And they reduce the risk of stroke. And also, just for a bit more detail, you guys, uh, data are a good source of various vitamins and minerals. For example, they have great uh, minerals like calcium, iron, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and zinc. And also, they have vitamins such as uh, riboflavin and folate and vitamin A and vitamin K. I just thought you should know that. Amazing that is. And in Ramadan, it's, uh, it's everybody's... Uh item of uh, household keepers i think that's what Absolutely. it is but ladies and gentlemen if there's anything you want to ask us you can log on to our facebook fan page which is with the name of well this morning on twitter well this morning without a on G. daily motion and youtube well this morning and the fabulous repeat is going to be 11 5 p.m this evening have a wonderful day have a good ramas uh, have a good fast and we'll see you by till the next time one two three good, good morning, morning.